The mystique of the Oakland Airport increased in 1931 when Amelia Earhart first arrived here in an unusual aircraft called an auto gyro. And she chose to land here again at the end of the very first solo flight between Hawaii and the mainland in 1935. On this flight, Really no bad weather at all except a few little rain squalls. I saw the moon and stars most of the night. Of course, in both flights, I was very glad to see land. She was dressed in men's clothes, you know. I mean, she had slacks on and a leather jacket, and her hair was tousled. And there wasn't many women flying in those days. So. It was quite an experience to see her. Amelia Earhart, who is just, to me, has as much mystique, probably, as any personality in 20th century history. That first solo flight from Hawaii to North America ended here at Oakland to great cheering crowds. Then, of course, in her famous and mysterious last flight that she never returned from, she left from, uh, from Oakland. She left Oakland in May of 1937 with her navigator, Fred Noonan. They started out and they got as far as Lake New Guinea, uh, again, destination Holland Island, mid-Pacific, and uh, never uh, have been seen since. Air travel was beginning to take hold in the 1930s. In 1936, Pan Am's China Clipper began carrying passengers across the Pacific to the Philippines. 4,000 passengers passed through Oakland in 1929. Ten years later, more than 70,000 people were using the airport as planes became bigger, faster, and more comfortable. But for most people, flying was still a novelty. Les Thomason had grown into a teenager with a penchant for photography. This is the camera he used to shoot the air races in Oakland in 1938. It was a big event. They had uh, bleachers up, and there was hundreds and hundreds of people there. And Oakland was a going, uh, it was the airport. 